Hey everyone, this is Sheets, and we're going to be doing our MMA contrarian betting breakdown for this UFC 304 card coming from England, where you have two kind of five roundish main events, one being the heavyweight championship between Curtis Blades and Tom Aspinall, local hero. And then you have, I think it's welterweight, uh, Leon Edwards, uh, local hero against uh, Bilal Muhammad. Not to mention that we have 12 other fights, and with any luck, uh, one of them will not be postponed by the time I finish this breakdown. We have a pretty bad run in the last couple of weeks where literally as soon as I'm finished with this breakdown, something else gets taken off. So hopefully we're going to – that's not going to happen. So, again, what we try to do here is not your typical betting breakdown. In other words, uh, I could tell you what I think is most likely to happen – and I could even tell you what might be considered good value by uh, quote-unquote sharp betters, but that's not what we're trying to accomplish here. What we're trying to accomplish here is to be contrarian, meaning that we're, to, to, we're supposed to get on board with what the public has agreed to and go against it, right? It, and this type of logic, it, it, it will train your brain to be much more critical in general. It will train, train your brain to be much more, uh, I don't know, suspicious of that which is obvious and this type of approach has worked very very well for me uh going all the way back to sports betting and stock market and things like that and any market where there's a vig that is sort of a combination of data and psychology this type of approach always seems to work for me and it gets you thinking about things in a different way so what we're going to be doing is going through uh, these 14 fights and come up with 14 different bets that are probably not what you're going to be seeing throughout the industry, yet it will they will make sense. They're not going, to, not going to be the most obvious plays. They're not going to be the ones that are the best plays, but they're certainly going to be very contrarian. And again, in the long run, this is the way you're supposed to be playing sports that um, you know are ripe with chaos like UFC yet for whatever reason are just so agreed upon by 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 the betting community you know by the time this this these cards get analyzed you have at the very most you know two outcomes that people agree on either a wins like this or b wins like that um and sometimes you get complete consensus going in one direction so uh we're gonna try to fade that and have a little fun with this now just because it's fun doesn't mean we're not going to be putting money on this. And again, here are the full disclaimers, okay? I'm going to be betting every single thing that I recommend, and you'll see me do it live. Second thing, we are going to be betting one thing on every single fight on this card. And yes, that's not the best money, man money, man man blah, 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 blah. money management system in the world, but we don't care. Second of all, we are going to be betting one unit on every fight, which also is not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care about that either. And for us, one unit is going to be $180. And again, I think it's healthy that when people come out and say that they're going to be betting something, that they actually say how much they are betting. Uh, I know that it's kind of industry standard to do things in terms of units because everybody's bankroll is different. But I don't know. I just think it's healthy to actually not only put your money where your mouth is, but show your money, show your mouth what your money said or show the money that came from your mouth. Or God knows actually what I'm trying to say. Anyway, the final rule, and we have to think about this. The rule is this, that we are going to presume that the first 12 fights or 13 fights on the card, we are just going to lose. And what we're going to have to do is the main event, we are going to have to bet something to get all of our money back. So I have to think about how I want to handle this, because normally if it's a 14 fight card there'd be one main event i would presume that the first 14, 13 fights we would lose and then the last one we would try to get 14 to 1 but there are actually two main events uh on here so how are we going to handle this i think what we're going to do is we're going to presume that we go 0 and 12 and we're going to take two shots to get our money back so we're going to take two shots at a 12 to 1 shot or 13 to one shot, one in the co-main event and one actually in the main event. All right, so let's get started. Um, we can have Shawana Bannon versus Alice Ardeline, an extremely low-level women's women's fight. Shana Bon Sh Shawana Bannon 
is just awful. Okay, she's terrible. And they 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 pitted her against Elise Ardeline, who's who's uh filling in on short notice. And Ardeline is kind of a TikTok uh, uh TikTok sensation. She has about you know, uh, I think 500,000 followers, maybe more. And it's kind of a joke, right? I mean, this is like the lowest level that you can come up with. I guess they had to start off the card with something. The only thing I have seen is that uh, Alice Ardeline is apparently very, very aggressive. Okay. Um, so what are you going to do here? I mean, you're probably spo not supposed to bet this fight, but we're not doing that. So it probably rates to be a really boring low-level fight. The only thing that I've heard is maybe, just maybe, Ardeline's aggressive enough where maybe she can make things a little exciting. So what we're going to do is we're going to bet the one thing that nobody talked about, and that's going to be we're going to take Shauna Bannon inside the distance. Right? And it makes a little bit of sense, right? Because is, if Ardeline is, in fact, kind of a joke and coming out here flailing and swinging bloody murder, you know what I mean, then... Bannon, if she just kind of like waits, she might be able to finish Ardeline, you know, pretty, pretty handily. If in fact Ardeline is kind of a joke, right? Um, so I don't think anybody's really expecting Bannon to finish. So that's what we're going to play. So Bannon inside the distance, I imagine is going to be pretty big. Yep, is plus four hundred, and we're going to put this in here. Well, where are we going to find this? One eighty. Uh, we can't do it yet. Um, you'll, you'll see. We'll be able to do it at the end. Okay, so already we're going to be 0-1 because no one's playing this and probably for good reason. All right, next fight, we have Mick Parkin versus uh, Lucas Breschke. So it's no accident, you know, I, You know, Mick Parkin is on this card. It's in England. And Mick Parkin has been nothing but boring, honestly, in the last three fights. Um, not to mention his last fight, was against, I think, Mohamed Uzman, who just put on a completely miserable performance uh, in the most recent UFC card. So, you know, I don't expect Parkin to be putting up anything too exciting. However, you know, Lucas Bresky, he's pretty awful. And one thing I remember is that Bresky against uh, Carl Williams was taken down like a zillion times. And Park in his last fight did show that he had a lot of good wrestling upside. So uh, it seems to be a pretty easy result here. Park in, however he wants, is probably going to win a boring fight. But he'd probably maybe go for takedowns or something like that. And not only that, but if in fact it is close, it is a biased English crowd. Uh, or, in, you know, it's a biased uh, British crowd and probably biased British judges. So it's going to be just a question of what boring method Park in wins. So... We are going to take Breschke here. Uh, Breschke plus the 280 for $180. All right. Uh, Sam Patterson versus Kiefer Crosby. All right. So Sam Patterson is really tall, and, and, and he's got very, very decent grappling, very slick grappling. Kiefer Crosby, um, if anything, he's just kind of got a real kind of a puncher's chance here. Um, it's probably going to go for it in the first round. If it doesn't work out, Patterson will take him down and submit him. So these are the things you really can't bet. So so you can't bet Patterson by sub because that's what everybody's expecting. And in a weird way, you can't bet Crosby by KO, even though that's like a billion one because that's people are saying that's his one path to victory. Um, so what you can do is you can play Patterson either by decision or Patterson by KO. And Patterson by KO is probably pretty long. Um, let's take a look before we even do this. But let's let's make sure before we um, before we try this that he's at least had one knockout in his arsenal. Okay, if he's has no knockouts, we're not going to try it. But if he does, then we are going to try it. Let's see. Uh, submission. There you go. KO. Oh, he lost the KO. Submission. All right, here's a KO win. Submission. There's a KO win. Couple more submissions. So he's he has almost as many KOs okay, since Sean Flynn. Uh we have to take a picture of this because we have to send this to somebody. Hold on, hold on. That's pretty funny. How am I gonna remember this? So I have to I have to actually know someone named Sean Flynn. So I have to remind myself to tell my friend. Okay. Uh 
Um, so we're going to try it. Let's see what his odds are. No one's no one's going to be playing this. Stan Patterson by KO is we don't need no particular round here. Winning method Patterson by KO plus two seventy five for one eighty. All right, moving on. We have Muhammad Makaya versus Manel Kopp. Striker versus grappler matchup. Okay. Kopp is, is certainly has the advantage on the feet. And Makayev certainly has the advantage wrestling. And Makayev, you know, if he's going to win, it's going to be a long, you know, boring fight where he just kind of holds on and smothers it. Okay. So you know what you can't bet? Makayev by decision. Okay. And 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 Cop, I think if he wins, I think there's a lot of different ways he can win. He could get a KO. He could get win by decision. I don't think people are pounding either result really. So we could be we could we could bet either of those and be in, in good shape, but you just can't bet Makayev by decision. And I don't really think you could bet Makayev by submission either. Okay, because that's the other his other method of victory. So let's take a look at some of these odds and see what we can actually figure out. All right, Makayev. Um, let's see what these are anyway. Makayev by sub is plus four hundred. <laughs> Seems pretty reasonable. Um, Makayev by decision plus one thirty. Makayev by KO. Oh my god, he just throws no strikes. It's just never going to happen. Right. Um, I think I think what we're probably supposed to do is 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 one of these cop uh, one of these cop uh, props. It's just really really tough, you know. I, I don't think there's anything particularly contrarian here, but we are going to try it. We, we, we will play. Boy, which of these do we? We're probably just supposed to play cop, honestly. But I think the cop by decision is the one we have to do because if anybody's being played by decision, it's probably going to be Makayev. But we're going to do that. Cop by decision plus uh, 300 for 180. Oban Elliott versus Preston Parsons. All right. So Preston Parsons has, has you know, all I've been hearing all week is that is that he is going to be the pressure fighter. He is going to be getting the wrestling going. And Oban Elliott's kind of well-rounded, but, you know, at the end of the day, Preston Parsons just has just, he's just kind of, I guess, better everywhere, I suppose. So we're just going to take a shot here, and we're just going to play Elliott plus the 124. I haven't really been able to find anybody to pick him. So, and he's only plus 124, so there's got to be something, right? So we will take Oban Elliott plus the 180. Modestus Bokaskis versus Marcin Prachniow. Just two really, really boring low-level fighters. Not even low-level fighters. Two very, very boring plotting fighters. They can be somewhat technical, <coughs> but they don't have a lot of finishing upside. So what we're going to do, very, very odd, very, very obviously, is play this fight to finish. So let's see. Um... Let's see, fight props, fight does not go the distance, plus 110. That's such a terrible line. It's such a terrible line that it's probably going to come in. All right, Kaelin Lochran versus Jake Hadley. Um... So... Hadley is taking this fight on short notice. And from a style perspective, it seems that this is, I don't want to say set up because it's not set up because he's, you know, obviously this fight wasn't even made really. It was just kind of, just kind of happened that this is a very difficult style matchup for Jake Hadley because Lovren it could pressure him. He can go for takedowns and Hadley himself does not, you know, he doesn't mind getting taken down. Okay. So in all likelihood, Lawford's going to get takedowns and just kind of ride out a decision here. Um, or maybe he could get a knockout or whatever. However, one thing I like to do is in situations where 
um, where one fighter is is definitely going to be getting the wrestling advantage, is realize that once you get into these grappling battles, a submission is very much in play for both both fighters. So we're actually going to take a shot and play Jake Hadley by by uh, submission here. Uh, let's see what this is. Hadley by submission plus 650. I mean, that's good enough for me. Um, and that's probably that's probably the best way he has a chance to win, right? He's not really been training for this fight. He doesn't really have the cardio uh, to really survive a three-round fight like this against this guy. So probably is going to end up like getting some sneak submission anyway. And because, you know, the style kind of matches up there he's, where he's going to probably be on his back and have to try something like that anyway. Um, I think this is this is a good look. So Hadley by sub plus six fifty for one eighty. Right, uh, Molly McCann versus Bruin in Brazil. I just can't help it. It is obviously a fixed fight for Molly McCann. It is in England. She's going to have the whole crowd behind her. Bruin in Brazil has really shown nothing. Um, and uh, Molly McCann is going to basically have her way with her. So we are going to have to take Bruno Brazil plus the 280. We I just have to do it. I'm not, I have not heard a single town or anybody pick her. And I don't even mean pick her to win. I mean pick her even plus the 280. So we, we're gonna we're gonna have to try this. All right. Um Nathaniel Wood versus Daniel Pineda. <sighs> All right. Uh the line is apparently wide, whatever that means. And Nathaniel Wood really doesn't have that much finishing upside, I've heard. You know, he he he's good with the leg kicks. He can get some takedowns, but he's not particularly explosive. So what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that he is and do something like, I don't know, like even Wood round one. I don't think anybody's doing that because if anything, Wood might be able to, you know, wear him out and take over late. So let's see, what is what is – Round one for Nathaniel Wood. Only plus 240? How can that win? We're going to try it. Nathaniel Wood, round one. Now, I should go round one by sub, but we're not going to. Nathaniel Wood, round one for 180. All right, we're moving along. Arnold Allen versus Giga Jakatsi. It's going to be a striking battle. And, you know, both fighters are gonna are sort of low volume. Okay, so uh it seems as though this is kind of headed towards a decision. So this is gonna be one again where we're gonna be playing more for violence. All right. So we're gonna I don't know which one we're going to play. So we're just gonna play this fight. Does not make it to the scorecards. And that would be fight props, fight does not go the distance. Plus the one forty five. That's a terrible bet, and I like it as I like to say, so terrible it just might win. Uh, okay, Christian Leroy Duncan versus Gregory Rodriguez. I, I'm 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 down with this one. Okay, this one I like because this is definitely supposed to be a banger, right? Uh, and, and Gregory Rodriguez he puts out all kinds of exciting fights. Okay, he's gotten KOs. People have been waiting to catch on his sub for like months now, right? Or for many fights now because he does have a lot of grappling. Um, uh, but he's got a very, very bad chin. So what, one way or another, this fight's going to finish, or so they say. So we are not doing that. Like we, we are going to be betting one of these turkeys by decision. Um, and I think that the one you're supposed to play is Christian Leroy Duncan, because if there's anybody that's getting bet by decision at all, it's going to be Rodriguez because he's going to he has that perceived grappling upside. But I don't think anybody is taking Christian Leroy Duncan by decision. So let's do that. All right. Winning method. Duncan by decision plus 450. How about we get one of those? Bias judges. How is it possible that Rodriguez could lose a fight by decision? It's not possible, right? So that's why we're doing it. All right, moving on. We're almost near the end, huh? All right, so now we have 
Bobby Green versus Patty Pimblett. Um, th this is might be the one. Well, I shouldn't say non contrarian bet. I knew what I was going to do this fight like all the way all week long, and I was just afraid that other people were going to come up with this same idea, and and nobody has. So I'm I'm down with this one. So Patty Pimblett, first of all. You know, he's obviously going to have the judges in his back pocket, right? So, uh, yeah, he's already won, beaten Jared, beat Jared Gordon in a kind of a weird, weird decision. But uh, yet still, there are people that are betting some Bobby Green by decision here, even though they'd be afraid of, of the English judges. Um, there are also people betting Patty Pimlet by, by, uh, by sub, okay? That's possible. So we can't bet that. What I'm just going to do is play Poppy Green by K. Right? I, I don't understand what the problem here is. If Bobby Green has such a big striking advantage, why doesn't he just knock him out? You know, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, Bobby Green. And, and what we really should do, honestly, is just play him inside the distance because, uh, again, if Patty Pimlet does get it, take him down, then submissions are always kind of live. So I think Bobby Green uh, could get a sub. I mean, he just subbed, what's his name, uh, uh, Tony Ferguson, giving Tony Ferguson, his, I think, his first sub loss. So let's just play Bobby Green inside the distance. Not, you know, not to get too fancy here. Where is this winning method? Bobby Green... Plus 350 inside the distance. All right, so we play 12 fights. And, and, and honestly, these 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 could be 12 of the worst bets you've ever seen someone make in their lives. We're going to have to really get all our money back. So let's just kind of review this. Let's just start with this just literally. Where, where is it? This is, this, is, this is the garbage. Okay, so it's like Shannon Bonin abandoned by actually finishing a fight into the garbage. Breschke against against hometown hero Mick Parkin gonna get taken down all day. Garbage. Sam Patterson. I mean, he's probably gonna win, but it's probably gonna be by not gonna be by KO. It's gonna be by sub, right? Manel cap by decision. Uh, if anything, if anybody's win by decision, it's gonna be Makaya who gets all these takedowns. Oban Elliott against Preston Parsons, who has the advantage everywhere, only plus one twenty four. Grzkowskis against Prachnow. Are you kidding me? And how's that gonna finish? Jake Hadley, on short notice, going to get smothered by Laughlin. We're going to play him by submission. Bruno Brazil against hometown hero Holly McCann. Molly McCann. Nathaniel Wood, no finishing upside round one. Alan Jukazi, <laughs> rain strikers to finish. Leroy Duncan by decision against someone who's never lost by decision. Bobby Green inside the distance. Are you kidding me? So we're 0-12 into the garbage. We have two chances to get our money back. The first one is going to be Tom Aspinall against Curtis Blades. All right. Uh, Aspinall is quicker. He's certainly the better striker. And we're not exactly sure he's, he's the worst grappler either. He does a black, he's a black belt jujitsu as well. Curtis Blades, you know, if he decided that he was going to get his wrestling going, then, yeah, I mean, he would certainly have a chance, but uh, he hasn't really tried for his wrestling. So what you're really supposed to do here is just play Aspinall inside the distance or Aspinall round one or something like that. Um, but we can't do that, right? We have to we have to start with something that is 13 to 1 or higher. So let's start with uh, what people are not expecting, and that being the fight going uh, going longer. OK, so we can't play Aspinall round one. We probably can't play him in round two. What about Aspinall later? Let's see. Aspinall round three. Can You're not even getting the right odds. Can't can we get 11 to one on it? But Aspinall by decision plus 13 to one. Now, that is something that no one's expecting, right? Because Aspinall's never made it out of round two, right? As a matter of fact, I'll bet you that Aspinall by decision is longer than Blades by decision. 
Is that, is that is that possible? Let's see. Yep, Blades by Decision is plus 1,000. So we're going to try this. Aspinall by Decision. To make it through the cardio. Survive the takedowns. Good grief. So that's losing. Uh, and now let's get on to the main event. Main event, now that we're now 0-13, we have to win all of our money back here. And it's Leon Edwards versus Bilal Muhammad. Now, I'm going to tell you what you're really supposed to do here, okay? You're supposed to play Bilal Muhammad by decision because no one's expecting a, a you know, the British uh, judging for to give a decision to anybody except for Leon Edwards. But that's just not going to be 13 to 1, right? So what we're going to have to do all right, is, is play one of these characters early. And unfortunately, I, I don't think that any of them is going to be that, uh, you know, it's going to be that long early. Um, but let's let's take a look. But look, Leon Edwards is supposed to, this is supposed to be a range, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, this, this fight's supposed to go the distance. It just is. You know, Leon Edwards, great footwork, great striker, doesn't really finish people. I mean, yes, he finished Usman in the fifth round, and Bilal Muhammad, he's going to, you know, he's a very, very smart, high fight, fight IQ fighter. I really doubt this fight finishes early. So that's really what we're going to have to try to do here is, is bet on this fight to finish early. So what do we get on some of these Bilal Muhammad finishes? Let's see. All right. So forget the, forget, forget the rounds for a second. Let's look at winning method. Let's just go backwards. Edwards by sub. Oh, goodness. Edwards by sub plus 1400. Well, no one's expecting that, right? Bilal Muhammad by sub plus four. I think either of these fighters by sub is probably is probably a good look, right? Boy, oh boy. I, I wouldn't know which one to. I wouldn't know which one to pick. I mean, I guess I would. It would probably be Muhammad, but hmm. all right, let's go back. Let's go, let's go back to the round props here. So round, we're not going to be able to get to Edwards in round one or two, but boy, Bilal Muhammad to finish early. Now, if it were me, if I could, I'd probably consider something like Muhammad in round one or two. This again, no one's really expecting it. But neither one of them is. But I, but I, 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 w I don't have it in me to pick either one. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to play one of these guys by submission. All right. And the question is, is which one of these guys has actually won a fight by submission? Let's see. All right. Let's see. Let's first look at Baha Muhammad. Any any decisions on his record here? I mean, any submissions on his record? Yeah, he's got one against Sato. Yeah, that's not going to be good enough. Well, Leon Edwards, do you have any subs on his record? So no subs. Oh, there's one. And there's two. And there's three. All right, that's going to be good enough. We're going to go Leon Edwards by sub. Hopefully, Bahamut goes for those takedowns. Or he's getting so pieced up on the feet that he's just a panic takedown. And Edwards just kind of snatches him up. So we're going to do this. Leon Edwards by sub plus 1,400 to win all of the money back. Um, So tail at your own risk. But I do promise you this, that you are going to be contrarian. And I, I promise you this as well. In the long run, in life. You start thinking about markets in this way, you're going to end up being richer. You might end up being very, very poor after tonight, but in the long run, you will be a smarter, richer person for it. Uh, okay, stay tuned. Uh, later tonight or tomorrow, we are going to be doing our DFS slate uh, line of construction video where we try to win the 200000 offered by DraftKings, and uh, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.